Hi, today we're gonna try and make a pizza oven using a gym ball as a form. Jigsawed out some pieces of melamine chipboard and silicon silicon them on the edge there. These boards have got lines on them so it's easy to find the exact center. And here I've marked where the door's going to go. I've covered the whole thing with a bit of cling wrap. Just gonna make this on the ground. Got some old sheets and rags that stop rolling around. Today we're gonna use this standard Portland cement with crushed pumice stone. Some of the pumice stones you can collect off the beach. You know where to find it. This stuff's crushed up. Nothing bigger than about half an inch. A lot of fine stuff through it. Mix five parts crushed pumice. One part standard Portland cement. This pumice stone is mainly about 70% silica about 13% aluminium oxide which gives it that fireproof effect here we're going to start mixing some up now just got a bucket mix 10 cups just to use a cup or something to make sure we get it exactly right. Mix your dry ingredients in first. Two cups standard pork and cement. Ten cups of pumpkin. Mix up the stick. Best you need about the same amount of water as cement, maybe a touch more. This pumice will suck a little bit of water up. So you just mix it and let it sit for about five to ten minutes. Ten minutes is pretty best. You don't want this mix too wet. Okay, it's best to get the stuff not too wet and not too dry. I'm going to start over here near the door. Just pack it down with your hand firmly. Got that chipboard there, silicon non that guide it. Start over there near the door. If you haven't got any of this stuff, you can use clay or vermiculite concrete or perlite concrete. You can use this gym ball as a form for clay cob oven. This will probably take a period of over five days to slowly do this. put a render over the whole thing so it's going to end up with about nearly an inch and a half thick this is a 30 inch gym bore that I've pumped up to about 32 inches with nearly 800 mil and as we put this on we're going to slowly turn the bore as we go Down it. Try and get a bit of the air bubbles out of it. The gym board's got a bit of give in it, so just give it a bit of a tap as you go. 
when we render it. I'm going to put a honey coloured or red oxide render on it. And as you go, you can slowly just turn that ball. We're only going to do a section at a time, otherwise, the mix will just fall off properly. about five litres at a time. It's just a bit over a gallon. Best to wear gloves if you want to make a mess. Make sure you get it nice and firm down the bottom there. This section will be joined to a slab later on. I've got towels and stuff on there to stop it rolling away. stuff that falls on the ground you can just reuse it. You have gone around this now and just have to do the top. Been going for about five days now. Put it about over five litres at a time. Just have to do that top bit. Here's these timber strips down the bottom. Just chopped out a bit of melamine chipboard. That's where the door is going to go. Just have to finish off this top. So we're nearly finished now. This thing's taken about 40 litres, which is about 9 gallons. About an inch and a quarter thick. Between an inch and a quarter and an inch and a half. 35 mil. I'll leave this for about three days, then I'll roll her over and let the air out. In the meantime, I'll cover it with some damp towels or rags and cure it slowly. We could spray it with a bit of water every day. Maybe twice a day. Make sure we pack it down firmly. This crushed pumice weighs 15 litres, weighs 5 kilogram or around 5 kilogram. I've done this whole top section in one go. The whole thing has been done over a period of six days. Any discrepancies should be covered by the stucco mix. I'm going to put an oxide in it, red or yellow oxide. Look around 
on that. There's the doorway down there. So we'll leave for a couple of days and we'll come back and see how she goes. Now I'm going to give this boar a coat of this fine stuff on the top, take out a few imperfections and make it more rounder. It's just crushed up fine stuff. Put through this fish net, it's nothing bigger than about, about a sixteenth of an inch or about three mil, nearly an eighth of an inch. Not sure whether they use this red oxide or this honey coloured one later on. I'll give the whole thing a coat later. Here we are out of here. Start applying a little bit of it. Give it a spray first. We're going to be doing it and joining it to the part you just done. Just pat this on by hand. Just do it slowly. Let it sit on there for 30 seconds or so. It tends to grab a bit better. perfect round. We'll cut out another one of these to suit the outside diameter which is about 860 I think. And you just go around like this. thing is going to have another coat of the same mix with the oxide put in it. So we can make it stronger and save on the oxide which is about $20 a bottle, a couple of litres of it. If you want a perfect couple of leaves out similar to what I had around the ball. I'll try and roll this thing over now. Get some sandbags here now. Got a bit of rope tied around here that helps support it a bit. Some foam here. Just do it slowly. Get the air out of it now. You see me down to that. Might take a little while. Yeah. 
starting to come away from storage in there. I can just about pull this thing out now. Helps. Looks like it's not too bad. Cool way, Looks pretty good. No cracks. Not too many big air bubbles at all. Pretty good. I tied that rope there just to help support the doorway in case anything happened. That's good. We'll come back soon and start on that arch. Yeah, we've got this dome on a piece of form ply now and I've got the um, arch form work made up the doorway is 200 mil high 8 inches 15 and a half inches wide about 390 millimeters that's where the chimney's going to go it's just made out of pieces of um, I wood and plastic cut out the jigsaw it's about all I use for the whole job homemade compass we can use a string on a nail on a pencil jigsaw tape measure and a drill this thing all come out pretty flat that's a piece of plywood I'm going to use to do the formwork for the slab. You can see in there. The back of this is more or less like a front. You have to lift it up a bit and slide in from the underneath. I'll try and get a bit of this slurry pushed in down there. Just a bit of plastic I use for some old garden pots. It's all coming out pretty flat. If you need to, you can cut this. You can actually cut it with a hand saw or a jigsaw or a grinder. I do have to adjust the door a little bit. Yeah, we put a bit of fine stuff around here because this door is going to be rebated. I want a real nice sharp edge. No air pockets. And the distance from here to here is about four and a half inches. You can make that whatever you like. And here's my mix. I've crushed, crushed up a little bit more so there's more fine stuff in there. Mix five parts crushed pumice, one part Portland cement. Let's see if we can get some down there. We'll poke it into the stick. Down in here too. Might need a 
small stick for that, I don't want to stick off a tree. Let me get it right down. wet and not too dry. Make sure you pack it in there tight. And these pieces on the side will stop it coming out but the top part should be alright. some tape in here so you just strip Taps of the hammer. I've had this curing for three days now. Slowly curing, I had some wet towels on the top. Hopefully, this should pull out. Yeah, we got her out of there now. Took me a couple of minutes. There's the rebate in the door. Looks pretty good. That's what's left of me formwork. I can reuse that, just replace that plastic. Next stage I'll start on this slab next. That rebate turned out pretty good. There's the chimney. Just take a look at from the back here.
Hi, it's John here. We've rolled this thing on its back now. Gave a bit of a tidy up inside. In this top of the dome, I've put an extra inch of our mix in there, make it stronger. So it's actually about two and a half inches thick in the centre of the dome there. About 60 mil. And where that chimney is there, I've cut a little notch out here that sits about an inch below. So the smoke should go out the chimney, not out the door so much. Tidy it up with the holes in there. We'll find a mix. Here's our formwork for the slab. I think is um, about two inches thick, 50 mil thick. Put some black plastic down on a bit of form ply. Cut it all out the jigsaw. This stuff around the edge is a bit of laminex or formica. And, uh, silicon here and there. Stapled on with a bit of silicon as well. Here's my formwork for the door. It's 25mm thick an inch. And a handle. Here's our formwork for the arch as well. We pulled apart. There's the back section. Front section, I put screws in there now. Here so I can strip it from the front as well. And there's a rebate for the door. If you look over here, some people like to have a door on this side and the chimney here, which means you need a wider thing here. Wider arch door. So I'm just going to have the door on the front with a stopper for the chimney, with a little dome on top. So we'll come back soon and start the start the concreting on the slab and the door. Okay, the slab's finished now. We put a ring of um, compo around the side, some fine stuff. Let's see if we can roll this on. It's made a wheel set up. I've got a hook, hopefully I can spot this out. There she goes. Pretty close. Just a little bit more and give it a vibrate. She's pretty close in here. chimney and we'll stuck over the whole thing. Nearly finished this thing now, I've done the formwork of the chimney and finished off the door. Just have a look at that. Just a few 
plastic bottles and containers I've found. Bit of timber down the bottom, circle cut out to stop it moving. A couple of G cramps. Let's take a look down in there. A bit more finishing off to do. Might give that bottom a sand up. This stuff sands more or less like timber. Get it nice and flat. Here's our door. And the chimney top over here. And just use a, these two litre bottles. That's just the bottom of it to make the top for the chimney. You can also use a bottle to do the chimney stack. And here's our door. Here's our colour we're going to be using. The honey oxide. Give the whole thing a coat. I've taken the strip the full micro off the base. You can see that there. Just have a look around it. Not too bad. Doesn't matter if it's not perfectly round. Doesn't look too bad, but so we put that last coat of stucco on it. We'll take any defects out of it. It's not too bad at all. Okay, we finished this door off now. Inch thick. Done the stop on the top. The plastic there to remove separate it. We render it. whole thing a rough over. 36 grid on a soft foam block. Taking all the roughness out of it. Just have a look there. Here's our mix we're gonna use. Two litres of this fine pumice through this fish net that's a little bit bigger than a fly screen probably about three millimeters is the biggest we've got 250 mil of the oxide honey oxide measure everything out in cups 400 mil of cement that's a standard portland okay we mixed up our stucco mix now make sure this stuff's reasonably wet this, this pumice really sucks it up and this took about one litre of water we're going to start on the top we've wet the whole thing down had a few rags sitting on it keep it wet we start at the top this will probably end up about three mil thick about an eighth of an inch. You can use this I showed you before. But I think I won't worry about it. Do it freehand, a couple of dimples, makes it look good. Start on the top, slowly go around. Let it sit for 30 seconds or so, it tends to grab better. I'm thinking this whole thing should take about 4 litres of mix, hopefully. Just pat it down and work it in as you go. You can use this if you like. wet sticks better a lot of this moisture is going to soak in pretty quick 
pretty dry day, very windy outside. says on the bottle the mix is at about 6%. I've doubled the colour oxide content about just over around about 11%. get on the steeper surface it gets a little bit hard. Okay we finished rendering this thing now it's taken about an hour and a half. Used about five litres of mix. It's not too bad. If you want a finer texture you can use a finer mix. Probably use a fly screen but it's not too bad. reasonably pretty round, a couple of dimples, looks better with a couple of little dimples here and there. It's been three days now since we've stuck over this thing. See how much it's lighting up in colour. Finished up the door. The chimney stop for all we do to the bacon. Taking off the base there. Oh, look inside there. Get a little bit of sand up and clean it up a bit. Put a bit of colour around that arch, which is just a um, fine pumice mixed with cement and a bit of the oxide. Have a look around there. Finished off the top of the chimney. Doesn't look too bad. Looks a bit different this side under the fluoro light. We'll let this cure for about a month. Come back and light a small fire and Slowly work it in. This thing now, build a stand for it. The door off on the stopper. Just have a bit of a look around it. It's made a stand up and put on some wheels so I can roll it around. Doesn't look too bad. I'm going to light this thing up now, just make a little small fire. And, um, see how she goes. Don't want to get it too hot. It's got a little bit of kindling in there. Got a bit of pumice stone soaked in a bit of methylated spirits, denatured alcohol, burns about five minutes, lights nearly any fire, windproof, stick that in here. This 
see if we can have a look in there. Don't want to get this thing too hot the first couple of times you light it up. In case there's any trapped moisture inside there. Just got a little bit of chopped up pine and a couple of sticks. I've had this thing curing for about two or three months now. I'm gonna make sure it was fully cured before I lit it up. This fire burned for about 15 20 minutes and see how hot she gets. I put some clay tiles on the floor, about 8 mil thick. They should protect the floor and hold a bit of extra heat, make it nice and clean for the cooking pieces. Those clay tiles will probably end up cracking but it doesn't matter there's a few joins in there and the ash gets between the cracks and fills them up. So we replace them after about a year. Okay, in about a week's time I'll see if I can get up the full heat up to about 800 degrees Fahrenheit, 550 Celsius and we'll try and cook a pizza. Okay, thanks for watching.